Uh, yo, what's going on guys? Uh, what's going on Comfy Gang? It's Comfy Neat here. Back with another video. I'm trying to sound like some generic ass fucking Twitch streamer or YouTube whatever gamer. But um, today, uh, before I start today's video, I just wanted to, um, I guess, give a brief little update on my intentions for my upload schedule. And I basically intend to alternate between the two, I guess, types of videos I've been making. Uh, the first being, I guess, like the regular videos talking about like neat topics or things that needs will probably relate to, I guess. And the second being my new self-improvement series, The Neat Ascension, which is gonna be based as fuck. But um, yeah, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But anyways, I'm gonna alternate probably every other video, like alternate between the two and try and upload more frequently since I have two series now. If you can even call my regular videos a series, but yeah. So anyways, today I wanted to talk about, I guess, the struggles of being an introvert and um, yeah, I guess what it's like being an introvert and things that introverts could probably relate to as well as defining what it means to be an introvert. So getting to that, what does it mean to be an introvert? Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about what it means, the term means exactly. And a lot of people confuse introversion with social anxiety and um, maybe even Asperger's, Asperger's, but um, the thing is, it, I can understand why people do this because there is a huge overlap in the sort of behaviors and there is also I guess high correlation between introversion and a lot of other sort of like social phobic or social impairments I guess like social impairment disorders but um, introversion at its core is really um, uh, I guess sort of like the opposite of an extrovert which is probably not a very helpful like definition, but I guess to put it this way, extroverts and introverts both have a sort of battery that they need to recharge, right? And um, extroverts on one hand, they, um, they recharge this battery by um, being around other people and they drain this battery or they consume the energy in this battery when they're when when they are by themselves, and it's the opposite for introverts, where we um, we recharge this battery, uh, basically being by ourselves, and drain it when we're in public, dealing with other people, even if it's close friends. Although the battery obviously tends to be drained a lot slower with people that we're comfortable with or have been around for a while. But, um, sorry, let me just check that I'm recording. Okay, I am, that's good. And um, yeah, so that's basically the primary distinction. And at the same time, a lot of people often think that, um, you know, introverts don't want to be around people, but that, that's actually not true for most introverts because introverts um, are really just like everybody else in that they obviously apart from the few exceptions out there like most human beings need some level of social interaction to feel like they're healthy and introverts definitely need social interaction and they crave it when they don't have it as i crave social interaction despite being extremely introverted. And um, yeah, but despite this, it only, I guess, takes a little bit to scratch that itch for an introvert. And afterwards, they kind of, um, I guess, are capable of hanging out in the social interaction and feeling comfortable for a little bit longer. But uh, for past a certain threshold or like a certain amount of time, I guess, the introvert starts to feel more and more uncomfortable and drained from human interactions. And that's pretty much 
uh, me. Um, I would say, like I said, it's sort of like a battery and I guess because the battery is drained by socializing, I guess introverts would have what we call, what we would call a social battery. And my social battery, I'd say lasts around one to two hours for face-to-face -face talking and interactions. And that's from, on like a one-to-one -one thing. And um, I guess when I'm when I'm in like a large crowd or in like a large group, the battery gets drained faster. And when it's something like a Skype call, it still drains my battery, but not as fast. I could maybe do like three or four hours doing that. And through something like chat or text, then it extends to maybe like eight hours. Uh, and this is like per day or every, not per day actually. For me personally, these time frames are maybe like every two days. So that's how much I can handle it every two days. And um, yeah, it's hard because I feel like a lot of introverts um, end up, um, I guess, being perceived a certain way because I feel like we live in a society that predominantly rewards ext extroversion and sort of like, I guess, quote unquote, like, I don't know, outgoing behaviors, like talking louder, not obviously to the point of being obnoxious, but you know, especially in the West, I feel like the West is a pretty uh, pro extroversion society where um, people are basically encouraged to like, you know, be an individual and stand up and, you know, speak out and talk loud and, you know, sound confident like this and basically like just speak loud and um, yeah, just, okay, maybe be obnoxious just a little bit. Okay, I'm joking, but yeah. So, and when you're not, when you don't fit into this mold, people automatically draw a lot of different assumptions about you and come to a lot of conclusions that may not necessarily be true. Uh, for example, people find it weird, I guess. Well, obviously introverts don't. And I feel like it's thankfully becoming more and more accepted due to things like gaming culture becoming more popular. Thankfully, even though I guess a lot of that is people LARPing, but regardless, yeah. Um, it's like people find it weird if, um, I guess, you prefer to stay at home versus go to the club. If you prefer to read a book versus go to the bar and get drunk or like do drugs and, or like just play video games versus like being out with people. And you're kind of expected, I feel, to always be with a friend group and hang out and do things. And if you tell people that you're doing things alone, then they kind of just assume that you're weird, I guess. And they also like to assume things like that introverts are really like shy and incapable of having social interactions and all these, all these other things. And, you know, in my case, it's true because I suffer from a lot of other different issues like mental problems, but I'd say there are many examples of introverts out there who could actually, um, I guess, hold a conversation and actually be quite charismatic and, um, you know, be able to have like deep lasting connections. And yeah, but I feel like as far as those people go, it tends to be a lot rarer, rarer, oh, fuck, I can't talk. And um, yeah, so there's that. And what else do I have to say about introverts? Um, yeah, it can definitely cause a lot of uh, like misunderstandings, I feel. Like, for example, if an introvert might doesn't want to hang out for, I guess, a certain reason, like go to a party, for example, then um, I guess normies or extroverts often will come to the conclusion that, you know, maybe he's mad or maybe this person doesn't like 
us or you know this person is weird or I don't know all these different things and um, yeah definitely um, definitely sucks because at the end of the day introverts I feel you know have to sort of make a decision always have to, are always at a dilemma of whether they should stay true to their introverted nature and be comfortable with having less social interactions or I guess be peer pressured into you know hanging out with like people and I feel like I was like this where I was fairly introverted so back in the day when I like still had quote-unquote friends um, I would get invited out a lot and I feel like I would kind of go out and hang out out of obligation and I definitely enjoyed it to an extent but especially compared to now where I'm, where I'm basically alone like most of the time but um, at the same time I would often feel like drained and I would try and like cope and like rationalize in my head that I'm hanging out with friends and stuff but the moment I got home I would always just feel this deep sense of like satisfaction and relief like I just came all over my pants okay that's obviously an exaggeration but um it's kind of where you go like oh like um like uh <laughs> like kind of like how for example if you are walking the whole day or i don't know maybe for wages like if you've been working like a eight hour shift and you and when you, and you go home and finally get to sit on the couch and turn on the tv i feel like it's probably a pretty similar feeling where i guess socializing and being with people past a certain point actually ends up feeling like a chore and um yeah and aside from all these judgments and these inconveniences uh let me think of more inconveniences like for example um you know being introverted is probably a huge disadvantage in the workplace because you're kind of expected to maintain the sort of like outgoing pers persona and um, be able to like talk to your boss and like make buddy buddy with like your coworkers and do all that shit. But um, yeah, that's probably pretty taxing for an introvert and one of the reasons why I dread going to work. And um, also definitely um, interacts with things like my social anxiety and um, my Asperger's where it just makes, it kind of like acts as sort of like a multiplier where like by itself, it wouldn't be that bad and I could probably, um, I guess, deal with it. But when you're introverted and you have these like Asperger ASD symptoms, I'm not saying I have Asperger's or that I have autism per se, but I do still suspect after thinking about it that I am somewhere on the spectrum, even if it's only minor. And but especially like social anxiety too. It's kind of like a multiplicative effect where you base it basically like compounds on each other and just makes it infinitely harder to like talk to people. And when your social battery gets drained, it's harder to keep up like the normal like act as someone with Asperger's, I guess I'd imagine. And, you know, to be more confident and outgoing and you know more calm because it takes a lot of energy and motivation as well to sort of regulate all of the fear and all those things that come with being a socially anxious person although maybe it's the other way around where the social anxiety actually drains the social battery like who the fuck knows honestly i'm just making this shit up pulling shit out of my asshole and just you know coming up with like my own theories about things but um, yeah. And I guess one thing that I can add about being like introverted, I guess, and I forget if I mentioned this earlier in the video, is that thankfully, um, I guess it's starting to become a little bit more socially acceptable to be introverted due to things like gaming culture and um, I guess stuff like that becoming more popular. But at the same time, um, you know, I feel like introverts are still, I mean, valued less than extroverts. And I feel like this is especially true 
on the dating market, as I've said earlier, and work, and okay, yeah, I guess like pretty much everywhere, you know. And I feel like for guys especially, I feel like guys are kind of expected to be more extroverted, unless they're like, I don't know, like the top like 10% or whatever, because I feel like if they're not that way, then people kind of assume that you're like trying too hard to be like stoic or all that stuff. And so as a result, you're kind of expected to, yeah, there's like that factor too. And anyways, I can't really think of anything else to say. So I'm probably going to end the video now. So um, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below if you enjoyed what you've watched. And uh, yeah, hopefully stay tuned for my new series. And this is Comfy Neat signing out.